Oh. Todd. Yes. How was your trip, bro? Wait, you know, before I even ask that question, I'm sorry to interrupt you before I even let you answer. Todd goes, I'm going to be away Thursday, Friday. No, wait, wasn't it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? What, whatever, yeah. I won't be around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And all of a sudden, he's not back till Tuesday. Sorry, guys. I got another four days. I was in a, I was in a coma in, in a ditch. What happened? Uh, that, that's when the trip was planned. I just didn't think that far ahead in, in, in advance. <laughs> we have Monday meetings. and Every Monday. Monday comes Same around. Time. Todd's like, oh, Every yeah. I'm, I'm gonna oh, s- yeah. The Monday meeting, then I'm like, yeah, Jared, we're going to have a meeting. He's like, why? What do we have to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. This thing called Frono's photo that we that we do sometimes. <laughs> All right, tell me, tell me, tell me about your trip. I was, I, I just went to help him finalize the edits for his his project. Your brother. Yes. How, All I did. Speaking so I, of editing, where's the editing guide? It's coming. I'm editing the editing guide. Better be done next week, Todd. Yeah, when's it going to be done? It'll be done tomorrow. Tomorrow. Really? Yeah. I mean, meaning if tomorrow is September. Yes. Dude, it's going to be enough. before September. <laughs> I can't wait till September rolls around. Todd's I can't wait till no- I can't wait till November rolls around. Oh my god. It's not no. <laughs> it's not happening, Todd. No. <laughs> Alright, let's let's get let's get this shenanigan started because this is gonna be a alright, we'll just get it started. Fun episode. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo dot com. Welcome to Raw Talk episode number one forty two. And we're calling this one why I signed the Foo Fighters contract that I said not to sign last week or whatever I said. You did. Why? Which We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. This is going to be a very interesting episode because we're taking this head-on approach to answering this question uh, as to why and to look at the contract and to really break it down. Break so it down. we don't want to bury the lead too far, but there's some things that we have to touch base on before we get to it. We're actually going to do the Foo Fighters thing before we get to photo news yes. this week. But did anybody notice the new site? There's a new website? What yes. website? That would be fronosphoto.com. What's you that? have a website? Never heard of that. That's right. News the, to uh, me. The, the switch has been flipped. The website has been worked on for over four months at this point. It's been a while. It's been a while, but... It's been a while. It, it's, you know, we didn't want to go to Stained. Uh, it, Sorry. What was that, Aaron Lewis? Sorry, my bad. It's, it's been a while, and, you know, a lot of work went into it. There was a lot of back-end work. I, I, the Ooh, whole, a lot of phone calls, wow. emails. Yeah. Well, we went to Chicago for it. We did. To, to sit down and have the initial meeting. But Brain dump. if you haven't checked it out yet, go to fronosphoto.com. Take a look around. The way that we decided to put it together takes on a very uh, on-demand approach. Like on-demand TV or something like Hulu, Netflix, HBO Go. Just so that More the video shows... Based. Right. The shows are there specifically. Yep. And you can see the episodes for each show. Easy navigation. And, and, right. And, and so that's what some people have said so far is easier navigation. Where'd all the ads go? It's clean. It's much cleaner. Yeah. I got rid of, I said, one ad box. I'm sure your ad guy loved that. No, he didn't. <laughs> He's like, well, why are you keeping your own shirt me and all this stuff? I'm like, because they're mine. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference between my top banner being for me and the top banner being for some advertiser that I don't, you know, that. I don't want to deal with the clicks because it doesn't really matter. It looks much better. It, it's just much cleaner. Mm-hmm. Can I watch Big Bang Theory on it? <laughs> are, are, are reruns available? Is Game of Thrones on, on, there? on there? Game of no. Thrones? Oh. No. No, thank you. All right. No, guys. Fine. Anyway, uh, let me get to the plug. Let's do it. Can I get to the plug? <laughs> the hell is that? <laughs> My sound effects. <laughs> All right. Here, here's the plug. Atomos. There's been a lot of questions about the Atomos because of Cameras allowing you to do internal 4K recording. Yes. So like, why do I need a Shogun to do 4K recording if my Sony already does it? Or if the XC10 from Canon already does it? Well, it's a simple answer. And the answer, so what they said is the Shogun recorder is perfect for the new Canon XC10 and the Sony A7R2, RX10 III, RX100, really? RX 104? RX 100 Mark IV, yeah. Jeez, I had to do the like Roman numeral IV. thing. IV. I'm I only like, know because of the Jordan shoes. We have the two, <laughs> the three, and now the four. Uh, so for these cameras and any camera also recorded 4K internal, there are added benefits to uh, using an external recorder like the Atomos Shogun, increased color accuracy, yeah. recording and flexibility in post-production, being able to record in Hollywood quality formats like ProRes. ProRes HQ. Hollywood Right, formats. ProRes uh, DNX HR, which is Avid's 4K codec. Yes. So, you know, that stuff right there is why you want to take your... Four- you want to use the 4K to the best of its ability oh, yeah. and have unlocked a codec that it's designed for, and you can't really do that internally. You need to do that externally. Mm-hmm. Uh Increase the time limit. So if you just have a 128 gig 
CFast card, which is a lot more expensive than an SSD, well, you're going to be able to record longer with the SSD. Are you the CFast the, cards still that expensive, that they're more expensive than SSDs? They're really expensive. Wow. Really expensive right now. I figured they uh, would drop. Monitor video on a 7-inch screen, mm -hmm. opposed to a 3-inch screen. And that shot, yeah, that Shogun is... That's a perfect screen. It is an unbelievable screen. Mm -hmm. Review video on a monitor and tag clips. More features with focus assist, blah, 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 blah. The ability to load your own LUTs. I don't know what the hell well, LUTs are. A lot of the video features in general, they have the waveform, they have zebra, yeah. peaking, focus peaking, Do you know what LUTs are? That. Uh, chips. LUTs chips. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, those I'm not are, good at those describing are that technical stuff. They're tasty. They're tasty. Yeah. Uh, HDTV or separate monitor. Pro audio inputs is also important. But then what I think is important for you guys out there beyond this is don't forget that if you're doing HD only, bare bones is finally available. The bare bones version is available, Todd. That's... <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Who the um, hell gave him that? I don't know. Bare bones version comes with the unit the power supply, and hard drive caddy only for 395 bucks. So for 395 bucks, you want to record unlimited time as long as you've got, well, you have the AC power, and you have, if you have the SSD that you put in there, or a hard drive, spinny hard drive, which can be really cheap, you're recording. So if you're somebody who has one of the, you know, a, a consumer and Canon or Nikon, and you want to record a conference, somebody talking for two hours straight, and you don't want to cut... For 395 bucks, you get the bare bones, and then you just need to put a hard drive in it, and you're good to go. I mean, that's something we've talked about since day one working with Atomos. Is we that could we put wanted extra something, ones on the cameras. We wanted, yeah, like the, the bare bone kit with something that all they need, alls. Alls, that's a Philly thing, yeah. All they need is just the hard drive, the alls recorder, and that is, is it. All I need to get by. I, I, you could pay that much for just a monitor. Yeah. What three ninety five? Yeah, absolutely. Well, well but the, yeah. see, see, that's the other thing is, consumer end, three ninety five, to put that on your camera and just do the unlimited recording because everybody's like, well, how do I get past twenty minutes or how do I get past thirty minutes? This is yeah. how you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bare bones kit. Check it out. Go to atomos dot com to check out more. All right, let's You're get welcome, let's get to the Foo Fighters discussion yes. because that is what everybody wants to know about. Big discussion. Um. Because, uh, yeah, how did it all come about? Why did I sign the contract? And let's let's talk about it. So, should I read that question first, or should I just talk about how it happened? Uh, Why don't I talk about how it happened first? Yeah, that because works. what happened Preface is the whole thing. I have a friend, my buddy Shannon, that I toured with mm -hmm. uh, when I was with Modest Yahoo, and Shannon has been on the road for a long time, and the road crew are the people that know everybody else because they've worked with everybody on the road. The long guys, the guys that have been out for 20 years know everybody. So because he likes the work that I do and has liked the work that I've done, Chris Shiflett, he's friends with, Chris Shiflett is the guitar player in the Foo Fighters, needed photos of his new Fender that has just been released. He needed live shots. So Shannon was talking to him. He showed uh, Chris my work. I get an email directly from Chris saying, hey, do you want to shoot the show in Camden? Because I need some shots of my Fender. Good old Camden. So I said, okay. Then he connected to me with management, and management put me on the phone with Fender together to, to figure out a deal to work together. So Chris to, to personally shoot. reached out to you. He personally That's reached out cool. to me. So I, one, I can't make Shannon look bad. I don't want to look bad because Shannon showed uh, you know how... He loves my work. Mm -hmm. Chris liked my work. Connected me with management, and management then put uh, the people from Fender on the phone, and we negotiated for me to shoot. We're going to pay you, and we need photos for X. So I'm getting paid to shoot the show. At the time of the phone call, they didn't mention the contract, so I didn't know if I was going to have to sign one or not. But then it came before the show, and I had to make the decision to sign it or not to sign it. And I didn't just sign it. I asked the management a couple of questions. Why is this the case? Um, and so, you know, the, the general contract that you sign talks about that it's for publication. Yes. And that it's for usage one, one time. time use only. And I said, well, this doesn't apply to me. Is it all right if I cross that out and add that I am shooting for Fender, what my fee is and what their usage is? And they're like, yes. And then I inquired about um, the section number two, which talks about the whole copyright thing. The big section. That is a big section mm -hmm. about copyright. Yeah. Um, 
And the response I got back about why they have that there and the fact that they've been using this same contract for years. Really? And now it's only coming out that people are up in arms about it. But I shot them four years ago and I didn't have to sign. Maybe them. they didn't have one for you. Yeah. But, but basically what I was told is that they've had too many bad experience of photographers ransoming images back to them for exorbitant fees. Mm. Uh, images that only existed because they gave them access. You need this image, 20 grand. Right, so I can understand that. Yeah. I can understand that because if they granted somebody access and then they got the shots that they wanted to use but then came back and said, hey, we want to use this shot but the guys like or the photographers like, we, we need 20 grand to use this shot for what you need it for. That is plenty exorbitant. Yeah, oh yeah. And I can understand that. It doesn't... You know, it's it's a tough situation. Very. They're trying to protect the band because that's their job. The photographer's trying to make a buck. Everyone's I just look, trying to do their job. I look at much. everything from both angles. What is fair to me and what is fair to the client? So I think now's a good time to ask the first question that because I, I asked on, on Facebook for, for questions to come in. And let's just do it. No, I'm trying to delicately walk around this because it's, it, it's, it's, it's one of those subject. situations. The, the rights grab part of it is... You are signing over rights to the images. Yep. I still look at it as I have the images, but they want to be able to use them for whatever they want. And I think it works twofold. If you're going to shoot the show and you sign that thing, it's if you submit images to them that, and they end up using them, then do they get rights to them? They'll never use Steven's pictures. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, here we go. Nick, oh, geez, N-I-C-U-L-E-S-C-U. Nicolusu Rag Radu. Hey, Jared, you said on the last Raw Talk that no photographer should sign a contract like the Foo Fighters. I understand that this is a great opportunity to shoot a band like this, but what really made you change your opinion and sign the contract? I mean, you had the hashtag respect photographers <laughs> made, and now you are skipping your own advice. I'm not talking necessarily about the getting paid part, but at least about copyright of the photos. Thank you for your, the reply. That's a good I, point. I, I can answer that. He's a hypocrite. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, thanks, Moving Todd. On. Moving on. But you did say that. Um, but you have, I think, it was well, different I did in your say situation. That, but it's you're a liar. My, what? You're a liar. <laughs> in my situation here, I am being asked to do a to do a job, which I am getting paid for. I am getting paid to shoot the photos for Fender. Yes. Fender needs to be able to use the photos that I'm shooting because they're paying for them. It's not like you're shooting for yourself. Right. It's not like I'm signing it to just shoot. And and I even even with the contract the way it is, you're not giving anything up because you're not even submitting the images. You're really not. So when I signed the contract in the form that it was and the copyright stuff was there, yeah. I didn't worry so much about giving the copyright of the images that Fender was paying for to hire me to use because they were paying me to use the images. Now, what ended up happening... Is that, so that's why I signed the deal. That's a work for hire. I signed yeah. right. I signed yeah. what this contract said because I'm getting paid a fee that we discussed, sure. which was a nice fee, and for that fee, they need usage of the images that I capture. So there's absolutely, in my opinion, nothing wrong with doing that. I also wrote in here with... Uh, I wrote physically on the side here. I like that you wrote on the side, not on the bottom. Well, I, I wanted it to be <laughs> near one. <laughs> wrote around in circles. There's plenty of room, but... Yeah. With permission and consent, I can share the images online for personal use with approval. With approval. All right? They approved certain live shots for me to use. Okay. Okay? So that was being told that there is no, most likely no chance that I'd be shooting backstage. Then what happens the day of the show... Is I show up, I pick. I show up at four o'clock. So early. When but the show started at eight thirty, I believe. They go on at eight thirty. That's Jared. <laughs> Need to get to the airport at two. Let's yeah. go at five a.m. I wanted to be there early so that I had my parking spot. Yeah. So that I could get into the mindset of a shooter. Well, and I will say, Camden, New Jersey. If you guys have been to this venue, the Susquehanna Bank Center, it's hell when it comes to driving yep. there. You need time to get robbed and then recover. <laughs> well, partly, but parking alone is. But terrible. here's another thing. The cop that I ran into, the cops that yeah. was blocking one of the streets, but I know I needed to go that way to get to the press parking. They had a, a place blocked off. Always, every street's so blocked off. There were no cars coming this way, so it's kind of in an intersection because they didn't leave anybody any room. I had the choice of making a left to go around their cone that they're blocking and have the guy yell at me, or pull up near it and stop. 
So I did. He wasn't out of his car. So I, I stop. There's no other cars coming anywhere. And I get out of the car and he goes, what are you doing? You stop. <laughs> He's like, what are you, what are you doing? He's like, what are you, you stop. Doing? Stop your car. It wasn't that. You can't go around my cone. I didn't go around his cone. God damn you, you damn hippie. This is Camden. Cut you can't hair. bring your hippie car around here. So I didn't go around his cone. I stopped in front of it, and he gets out yelling at me, what are you doing stopping in the middle of an intersection? I wasn't in the middle of the intersection. Any car could have gone by me. And I'm like, sir... I didn't want to go around your cone so you would just think I was trying to blow by you and you'd yell at me. He's like, you're in an intersection. If you get in an accident, I get blamed. So I get back in my car and I pull around the cone. I haven't had a chance to roll down my window yet. And he's yelling at me to roll down your window. Roll down your window. I will shoot you, hippie. I will shoot you where you stand. So I finally get my window down. I finally get my window down. And he's yelling at me again. And I'm like, sir, be nice. <laughs> be nice. No, I'm like... I will not be nice, you hippie troll. <laughs> I'm just like, please be nice. I'm like, I had two choices. Pull around your cone and have you yell at me. Yeah. Or stop here and try to ask you if I can go by to tell you what I'm doing. So either way, I'm screwed. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, here are my press passes. I'm trying to get to the, per the press parking lot and... It's blocked off any way that I go. And he's like, all right, but make sure you stay on the right side of the road. I'm like, thank you. And I'm like, you're a fucking asshole. Get out Seriously. of here, hippie. Don't you ever talk to me like that again. <laughs> I just, he didn't have to be an asshole. And he was flat. And you told me this before. That I, I warned you of it. Those I'm like, Camden cops. <laughs> wait for it. Did your brother work in Camden? No, my brother, no, he works in Atlantic He works in Atlantic City. He just was so disrespectful right off the bat. That's I understand the thing. that I stopped. Before we even open our mouths, they're like, he's yelling at dicks. me for stopping in an intersection. I wasn't fully in the damn intersection. I, w I had plenty of room for cars to go by me. Nobody's going to go straight. Nobody's just going to run into me because no cars were coming. And I had to be like, if I went around, you'd be chasing after me saying, why are you coming on this side of the cone? I didn't want to break the freak, whatever. Beside the point. So I finally get, it's four o'clock. I'm sitting in the car for a while. Six o'clock was when they finally opened up. <laughs> what were you doing for two hours? What were you doing, for two, were you doing for two hours? I drank water. I sat in the back of my car thinking about the shoot. In the, the back shoot. of the car. You were in the back seat. I opened up the What were the you doing hitch. in the back seat of the car? I opened up the, the, two hours? the back yeah. gate so I could just sit and observe. You I were got tailgating? A, yeah. I got With a pretzel water. and water. I got a water. <laughs> you party hard, bro. And I was getting into the mindset for the shoot. Oh. So then I walk and I get my pass and they give me my pass. I open up the envelope and I see an all access, Ooh. a tour pass. Nice and not shiny. A, not, a, not a sticker. Yeah. An actual tour pass that says all access. So I go in. I talk to the guy at the back stage. He's like, that gets you anywhere. Wow. So what, what I was told, I got an email. That's a huge show to have all access. I got an email from... <laughs> I got an email from Chris that was like, meet me at seven to do some candids backstage. So I figured that's why they left me the pass. Yeah. So I'm not thinking that I signed this contract. And this is after management already told you you're not getting backstage. Well, they said it wouldn't pop. Most likely isn't going to happen. Gotcha. Yeah. So anyway, Chris left me the pass or the tour people did. I go back there at 645. Chris goes, you, you Jared? Because he's seen my picture. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? And we went into the How'd jam. How'd you recognize me? <laughs> We went, in, we went into the jam room that they have set up, and we just started talking. That's cool. We just had a great conversation. I'm like, can I do some candidates behind the scenes? And because... What are you doing backstage? <laughs> I told you, hippie, to not come back here. <laughs> Get out of here. I saw your contract. <laughs> <laughs> so the contract says nothing about shooting backstage. It, do it doesn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so you're right. It has nothing in there about I backstage. A I asked him if it's all right to shoot photos. Taylor walks in. Taylor Swift? Taylor. <laughs> you signed her contract? No. Isn't his name Taylor Hawkins? Taylor Hawkins yeah. comes in, the drummer, and he's like, cool, you know, shoot photos, because yeah. Chris let him know. And then Pat Smear comes in. Pap Smear? <laughs> no, Pat Smear <laughs> comes Pat? in, and he's that like. That is amazing. Pat was, Worst name ever. Pat's cool. He's like, yeah, man. Yeah. And so we're just talking, Cigarette and, and I'm taking candids all behind the scenes. Best photos ever from Tour what Tour manager heard. comes around. He's like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Jared, and I'm, I'm shooting with Chris. And he's like, okay. Because he's, I mean, to be at that level as a tour manager, 
you have to be one of the best tour managers around. Oh yeah. You you and they've got security all over. They have their own security traveler. Sure. What are you doing backstage? <laughs> I'm with the manager. What are you doing here, hippie? So <laughs> cut your hair too. So the ma- so the manager uh, Chris made sure that the manager knows that I'm going to be shooting the entire show from the pit. So that was clear from the beginning is that management got me the ability to shoot in the pit to get the great shots of Chris playing. And no one got the pit. No one was in the pit yep. but me mm-hmm. and the, the camera crew. Yeah. Um, and Did they have a lot of cameras in there? They had two, one on each side. It's not bad. They had one on the stage, and then they had just ones attached to their, their other stuff. And so uh, the, they, they hand me, like security tells all of the security, other, the, the in-house security people that I'm shooting the whole show, leave me alone. They walk me out there, and they make sure everybody knows and I got to shoot the entire show from there. But, but before I, the show even starts, I'm in the jam room. We have the video of that where I'm playing. I'm like Dave comes in and the band is jamming. Just pre warming up for 15 minutes. And it's just me and the band. There were some Tiny fans. Room too. There were some fans who were brought in, but then they got taken out. So one of them so happened to take a video and I'm in it and he posted it. So it was literally just you and the Foo Fighters jamming it was, out. It was <laughs> me and just the Foo Fighters in that little space. That's awesome. And all I... I, I what they know, smell like. What's going, through my ma- what's going through my brain is that I'm like, this is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I'm like, this is really cool. I have all access to one of the largest bands and the biggest bands in the world right now. And they're just playing music. And I have my earplugs in and I'm just shooting. And it was at the point I was like, I wish I had my fisheye because it was so tight. Yeah. It mm. was really tight. Oh, yeah. But, but they were the tightest band I've ever heard play. Nice. Just so technologi- just so technically sound. Unbelievable. So I was able to shoot the candidates backstage. I was able to get, pr- get the band coming down the hallway. Dave rolling down the hallway looking at me directly as he's rolling on his knee thing because he has a broken leg. And that's like a once-in-a-lifetime kind of shot, too, because he's never... Obviously, in a bro- in a cast, ever. Right. So Every well, time he's touring, they're oh, he's always running around like crazy. All those yeah. shots are ones that are never going to happen again. So I got those awesome, this tour. awesome behind the scenes shots, and also some other shots. Like Chris had his kids there, yeah, and those shots are incredible. I wonder if they come around a lot. I don't know to shows, but now the rub is I need to get permission to use the the stuff. It's the hard part. Basically, I have permission to use the live stuff. I'm trying to get permission to use the Candace stuff, not with his kids in it. But the stu- a couple of shots of them jamming, a couple of shots of them rolling, you know, him coming down the hallway, just because. Yeah. Now, again, you know, anybody can yell at me and say I'm a hypocrite because of the respect photographers. I don't look at this as a, a not a respecting the photographer. You have a choice to sign this, whether you sign it or not. I had you two had a choices. Job to do though. I was hired to do it. It's a work for hire situation. I am faced with this contract. I have two choices. I can sit at home and twiddle my thumbs and never shoot, or I can put myself into a situation myself, not everybody. What, Todd? I can sit at home and text Steven for uh, the whole evening, or I can go shoot. I can can put myself into a situation that could better what I'm doing into the future. And I say that for me because I've been around a long time and I've gained the access that I've gained. Not everybody is going to be able to have the same things Foo happen all access right it's tough but when i'm sitting in there talking directly to the band members and just having conversations and we talk about photography and we're just talking about anything in general there's a possibility that if my work is really good and they like it that maybe i do go on the road for three or four days because they need some candid behind the scenes stuff and that leads to getting paid and that also will lead to giving them rights to the images yep but in that case, I'm getting paid, and it's a trade-off. It's absolutely a trade-off. Give me permission to use my images, please. I don't. You can. You can. You can use well, them for whatever. And for you, you don't necessarily want to sell the images. You're just looking for content for the website. I'm really, not, it, it's great content for the website. Though I think that and some of the photos, some of the photos that I sh- shot, should go to Rolling Stone. Whether I send them directly with permission, best photos ever, or the band, or if the band's management wants to send it to Rolling Stone to be published, I don't care. That's fine. I just want them to be seen. That's what I care about. Oh, and right before the show, I got a curveball email. Yes. Remember the curveball oh, email? Oh, yeah, I remember. The it curve was literally, what, email. two hours before the show? A couple hours? hours before we leave, or I leave, I get an email from the management saying, hey, 
little curveball for you. And I'm thinking, yeah, they don't need me to shoot anymore, so I'm not going. Well, they said that up in Toronto, somebody else shot Chris live shots with his new guitar. And what's happening is if they decide not to use mine, I'm not getting paid, even though we already signed this contract thing. And so Todd would think that I'd probably flip out at that point. No way, I'm not going. (laughs) Screw you guys, I'm taking my camera and I'm going home. So I responded back. I'm like, all right, cool. And they said, if they use my images, I get paid. If they use the other person's images, they get paid. So you went into this not knowing if you were I didn't know that I was going to get get paid. paid. And so what happened was I, I emailed them back and I'm like, awesome, competition. I go, you know, now I... Step it up. Have you not ever th- seen my photos but before? Have you ever seen my photographs? I'm the greatest photographer ever. <laughs> but the thing is, I didn't... Shot Modest Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> you might have heard of him. As soon as, as soon as I got there, though, it never crossed my mind that I was in a competition to get... Uh, if I, you know, I, It never crossed my mind that I'm here, that I need to do well or I don't get paid. It didn't cross my mind. All I care about when I am at a shoot is doing the best job I can, whether I'm getting paid zero dollars or getting paid a million dollars. Well, that's, that's your mentality. That's how it should be for I every photographer. I am there to shoot. You're there shooting your family or you're there for the most expensive paid gig ever. It well, should be the same mentality. You're shooting your best. So always. that was the curveball. Yeah. And it turns out they're going last, to use... Last minute They're going ball. to use my, my images. Nice. That's what happened. Very I cool. got the email yesterday. We love this stuff. I got some great emails back from Chris. Really love the images. Greatest and photos ever. Now, I also shot the show, too. Yes. What, what'd you do? Uh, I shot the show from... Nobody liked his photos. <laughs> they weren't the best photographs ever, though. They were the worst photos ever. <laughs> no, but uh, I had to shoot from the soundboard, front of house, uh, with all the other press photographers, oh, basically. You were the only ever. one that had all access, and you could shoot the entire show from the stage. There's so we got pictures of me from this, uh, that people have submitted. I'll yeah. give them to you. Which, I got the typical, you know, first three songs, uh, shoot from the soundboard. I expected that, because it's a big band. It's an amphitheater shoot whatever um but i actually had to borrow a lens from you i borrowed the 300 28 with the d750 yep and i also brought my 5d out with the 70 to 24 uh, 7200 the new 11 to 24 that you rented from borrow lenses i borrowed that as well um and i'm very happy with my shots even from all the way from front of house now it's one of those shows that i just really wanted to shoot first of all it was my job i was getting paid either way it's something that i had to do for the radio radio station. station yeah i mean i could have denied it but it's one of the biggest shows of the year for them it's something that I just had to do. Um, and I wanted to do it on top of that. Right. But anyway, I got some shots of Dave, of his giant band of thrones, or whatever you want to call it, guitar, guitar of thrones. thrones yeah. yeah. And it's one of those shots, again, like I was saying earlier, that you're never going to see him like this, sitting on this giant epic throne with his cast and you, again And like you that. posted the images. And I posted the images. Uh, the contract, it says, subject to approval. They gave me no contact email or anything. Right. So I had no contact. Nobody to see said if I, anything about you need to send these to this address before you post them. When I got there and the Live Nation girl was basically bringing us out. Oh, speaking of Live Nation girl. Yeah. R- r- I'm sitting there before I go backstage. I'm just sitting on the ground that she walks up to me and she goes, um, I don't have you on my list. You're not, you're not on um, my list. What are you doing here? I'm like, all access pass. Boom. I'm, I'm like, I'm not shooting for you. Don't you ever talk to me like that again. Don't no, you know who I don't am? Don't you know who I am? I didn't do it in a dick I way. I shoot raw. But she, she asked me in a way that was like, you're, what you, you're not on my list. I'm like, I'm not going to be on your list because I'm shooting for the band. For the band. Directly. Yeah. Here's, here's, my, like, oh. here's my pass. I shoot raw. But again, she brought us out there. There was no mention of right. a contact or, or that we had to get them prior approved or anything. So posted them on the website. Uh, yeah, and everything worked out great. The station was happy. I was happy with the pictures. Well, and he talked for like I'm, 20 minutes well, on yeah, stage, he so did you talk had plenty for a while. of time. I think the three songs equaled out to probably almost a half an hour because he did talk for a while. And it's just him in the chair, yeah. and so there's only so many shots that of that you can get. 300 was perfect. It was just enough to get around the entire throne, yeah. where 400 would have been a little too tight. Uh, and I did crop in a decent amount on the D750 a couple times. Right. That thing's sharp, man. So you made the choice to sign the contract as I well. I did make the choice to sign the contract. In my case, See, I was getting paid either way. It was my job. I didn't have to do it, but I wanted to do it. You know, and the, I'm never going to sell these images. But the, the magazine talking, the, like, the magazines and newspapers, which I'm sure will come up in photo news here, talking about the, this is a rights grab and this isn't respecting photographers. It's not disrespecting photographers. It's only if they ask for the images and you send them. Yes. Or if you submit them and they need to use them for something. Yep. 
100 shows. If they played 20-some shows, if they play 30 shows on this tour, every single photo from the, is basically going to look the same. They don't want those images. They don't need them. On the flip side, the behind-the-scenes stuff that I took and having no idea that I was going to end up doing that before the show and having that paper signed put me into a little bit of a pickle because I need the permission from them to use them now. And the whole copyright thing may be transferred to them for that. But I'm not going to trade my access that I had personally talking to these guys and seeing that they absolutely loved the images. Best photos ever. That it could lead for me to something a lot more. Oh, yeah. Especially the fact that... Something bigger in the end. Especially the fact that we got along really well and had great conversations and just hung out and did what we did yeah so very cool so that that's th there's more questions i'm gonna answer okay a couple more but that that was really the feeling that i had at the show honestly one was it being in that in that room alone with them was like wow really felt great they actually did a tour uh maybe about a year or two ago where they did a tour of garages oh really and they just toured around i think they hit like nine cities and they played like random garages last minute no notifications. So basically, if you were like one of the 50 people that was in that garage or around that area, you got a private concert from them. You got even more of a private show. And it sounded Literally great. Just you. Yeah. It, absolutely. You know, he, Chris introduced me to Dave when Dave came in. Was he awesome? Yeah. Well, yeah. I assume he's he, awesome. So he introduced me to Dave when Dave came into the jam session and Chris goes, Jared's going to be shooting some photos. Cool. He's like, yeah. He's going to get the best pictures ever. But, but see, that's, ever. that's what happens is when you get in, like, it's a different situation. It really is a different situation. So, you know, call me a hypocrite. Call me that. Uh, I don't think that has anything to do with respect photographers. The fact that the Live Nation wasn't paying photographers yeah. is a different ballgame. You're getting paid to go shoot this show from the magazine, from the newspaper, from whoever your job from is. From the station. From the station. Should, contract, should there be these sh contracts? I wish there wasn't. I wish there wasn't, but I understand why the band has them. Just like I just love shooting and don't want to deal with anything else, I rather have a, a, a manager managing me and dealing with the business stuff so I can just shoot. Are these good? I, I just wouldn't trade the experience that I had, the images that I captured, the impression that I made on the band with the images that I shot. I can tell you they're probably sitting there looking at the images because Chris would have shared them with the band. You got to think long term. And I, I think much larger picture. Yeah, you got to think long term. And I, I argue with people about this all the time. They don't want to do stuff for free. They don't want to do stuff on spec. You've really got to ask yourself, like, if you do this at this point and take lesser pay or sign a contract, what's the big play? Ask Will this yourself, benefit me in the end? Ask yourself that. Yes. But don't let somebody dictate to you yes. that this is a great portfolio builder and a great opportunity. That I would tell that person to go screw themselves because it's probably some no name on the street like yeah you can build your portfolio for me no i'm great on my portfolio is fine without you but something like that major artist you really got to take into consideration what it means to you and your brand and moving moving the moving the needle for you yeah yeah for steven it doesn't really count because his stuff sucks <laughs> jared best photos best ever best photos ever all best right so photos ever. Uh, let me let me get to more of these questions okay i know we spent a lot of time on this yes let's move on kind I'm of interview of style but i just we had that we have to acknowledge it yeah and and talk about it each way and i know people will either agree or disagree or see both sides all i ask well we want to be public about it too but we all i ask is that you see both sides of a coin yes i make sure that when i go into situations especially in business that i make sure that does it bet is it bent mutually beneficial is somebody getting one over on the other person? I don't want it to be that way. Like when I'm negotiating, I look at their angle and say, what would they be happy with? And what would I be happy with? Where do you give concessions and where do you hold, hold tight? So I had changes in the contract because I was getting paid to do the show. So Max Logan, hey, Fro. To my understanding, you had a modified contract uh, since some of these we may have already answered. So if I already answered them, I'm not going to okay. go back into do gotcha. uh, contract to sign. And my question is, did they come to you to be the photographer or did you go to them and told them your conditions on that contract uh, will not work? Oh, basically, we already said mm -hmm. they came to me. Yep. And then I was faced with the contract and filled it out from there. Good question. David Chin. 
what were you uh, what were you able to shoot and what sort of access were you given? Can you use any of the photos for your portfolio? Should you choose or do you need to uh, explicit permission from either the Foo Fighters and or their label for every single photo every single time? Who ultimately owns the photos from the concert, the band, the label, or you? How common are very restrictive concert photo contracts? That's a lot of questions in one question. So that that is a, a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. and, and we kind of... Uh, Kind of Can it. I use them for the portfolio, the ones that they approve? As of right now, they want to approve just the live shots, and I'm working on trying to get some of the candid shots approved. Who owns the images? If we want to go by what that contract sign says, uh, it looks like they, sign, uh, they own the images. It looks like they do, yeah. And it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know I was going to be shooting backstage. I just didn't. And what I signed was based off of Fender using the images, and not having access to backstage. Well, like we said, work for hire. I mean, you're technically getting paid by Fender and working for them. And this time in around, that case, if, if that is what it is and the permission that I have is just for personal use, then so be it. Yeah. It's a lesson learned. I wouldn't change. It wouldn't have changed me shooting or not. Would you still have shot if you had known all this beforehand? Backstage? Yeah. Like, yes. Okay. Because like I said, once I got there... Even at 4 o'clock, which was good because it got me less upset about the police guy. Didn't want to ruin my day. Mm -hmm. Once I got there and started shooting, everything leaves my mind. I am there to capture the photos. The best photos. Best you photos know what I'm ever. saying? I See, I get fucking sentimental and you guys bust my balls. <laughs> That's an opportunity of a lifetime. It, I don't look at it as an opportunity. I don't look at it as an opportunity of a what lifetime. Is, to be backstage is, with them when his leg it's an is opportunity. broken and all those things that I've encountered a lot with a lot of different bands because I've been able to get the access. This is probably one of the biggest forever. bands, This though. is one of the biggest bands, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Not Stadium big, band. Not, not big as Cimarelli, though. <laughs> not big as Cimarelli. You yes. love that. I love Cimarelli. Cim I'm Danny. <laughs> <laughs> that girl's so tall now. I know, I know. She, she, she's like a... She's like, hey, guys, Danny here. Hey, guys. Danny here. Everybody's like, what the hell are you talking about? Just look up YouTube Cimarelli. Jared's, I, Jared's favorite band. I, I unbelie Anyway, back to the Foo Fighters. Yes. Uh, it wouldn't have changed me shooting because I was shooting. I'm, it's not like, no, I can't shoot because I don't own these images. Yeah. Because then what do I look like to them? A douchebag. You know, I'm there to make great images for them. It is what it is. That answers the question flat right, flat out that I probably don't own those images. But I wrote into the contract that with permission, I have usage right for personal use, which means pub putting it online. Yeah. So I made sure to cover myself, wrote that in there. Um, I'll just skip the rest because I'm, I'm sure we answered most of it. Robert Rogers, what kit did you use on the shoot and what piece of kit did you forget to pack as there was always that one thing? Mm. Really good question. It is a good question. Um, I generally, I didn't forget anything that I wanted to take, but when I was shooting in the tight space... I sat there and was like, should I have left that fisheye in the bag? Because didn't you say I never shoot with the fisheye? Don't you take never, it? never, ever. No, I didn't say don't take it. Uh, or maybe I did, actually. Yeah. Maybe I did say so don't take Steven it. So Steven screwed it's it not up Steven once This is again. also before we knew you were doing backstage. You, right. We were told that you weren't going to have access. But I still always go prepared. But I rarely take the fisheye anymore I, because... I don't, think have, I don't think I've ever seen you shoot with that. The reason I stopped taking the... F Way to go, Steven. <laughs> The reason I don't take the fisheye is because it is absolutely not sharp. Yeah. And I don't like the quality that comes out of it. So what I took, I had my new camera bag, mm -hmm. which we're going to show in Gear of the Week. Um, See, that's the thing, too, is we had to pack that camera bag, and it was already packed. Yeah, but the fisheye takes up no space. Mm -hmm. 14 to 24, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, D4S. All my memory cards I had in the front a D810. Just in case. Body just in case, which was going to stay there. I took a 302.8 AFS VR2, which once I had the knowledge that I'd be in the pit and the pit was didn't need a 302.8, uh, and Steven was going to use my old 300, I just let him use my new 300, yep. and he took my backpack, and I put in the 300 F4 from Nikon. Mm -hmm. And I broke that out when I was sitting on stage shooting. I got to shit on stage. There's a picture of that. Uh, I got this. I got to shoot on stage. I broke out the 300 and I put that on, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Because it feels like a 24 to 70. It it's looks lighter, like a 24 to 70, and it's lighter. And I put it on. I'm like, "Oh my god, this is a 300!" And I'm shooting Dave in his chair, f like this, filling him up. That's crazy. You know, with the guitar in his head. 
I was like, and it's sharp as shit. Yeah. So I didn't really forget anything. It's just that the uh, the Steven, fish I S- Stephen messed up again. Couple more questions. Hannah O'Brien. Hey, Jared. What was the best part of shooting the Foo Fighters? Did you prefer the time in the jam session or more at the concert itself? I know it must have been a difficult dynamic to to an ordinary Foo Fighters concert with Dave being in the in the guitar throne yep. chair. Do you think that made for more interesting, unique shots? Uh, hope you had an awesome time. Yeah, it made for unique shots. I didn't spend time shooting the rest of the band. I took a couple of shots of Dave, especially when they came out onto that center stage, and I could sneak around because I had ability to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And get those shots like right under him when he was when they were doing acoustic, right? When they were doing acoustic, right in the middle, out of the when he throne. got out of the chair and brought his and on, was crutches. on his crutches. Yeah, that's when I got to. Um, I walked around and I got. I mean, I just was right there. I was a couple of feet away from them yeah. in the middle, and so I was shooting that. My focus was on Chris and his Fender, of course, which he didn't play every, which he didn't play that guitar the entire show. How many songs did he play? It that? may have been six or seven oh, out okay. of like. I 20. thought it was only going to be like two or three no but he used it for a long stretch and i got boned on lighting a few times yeah because the light on him really wasn't great yeah oh yeah but then i got some i got the shot i got a bunch of shots and they approved a bunch for them to use and they're happy with them were you pushing your iso with uh stayed at 6400 or less a lot of times i was at 2500 because it was so bright because it was probably a stop or maybe even two difference between chris oh, yeah. and like dave a, a lot yeah. yeah so i i focused on on him um what did i pre- i prefer shooting backstage all day long oh yeah the live show was, um, was, more of a story. was over three out was almost three hours. Um, to me, I start to get restless and bored. What are we doing, guys? I it, stayed the whole show. How long is your show going to be? It I was got one things of the, to do. It was one of the greatest shows I've ever seen, and I said that a couple of songs in. I just, you know me with long shows. I, but that's why I switched to going on stage and sitting there, side stage, right next to, and just shooting from side stage because it changed it up. And then at the very end. The, I, I didn't know that they would get together as a group Come and, out and, like and, bow and, and bow and say goodbye. So I saw this that possibly was going to happen. I went back around, got back into the pit, got my 14 to 24 on, saw Dave go out to the center, ran my way into the front, right in the middle, and shot right up at all of them together in a band and shot. you've got one with like his crutch in the air. And yeah. I love that shot. So the good question, Hannah. Yeah. Uh, Richard Perry, do you feel that your social media status influenced the management to agree with your alterations to the contract? Absolutely not. Best photographer ever. They couldn't care less who I was or what my stance was. They didn't care. Well, they thought you brought up some good points when you had emailed them, right, about adjusting the contract? They said all, all you know, great questions yeah because generally speaking i'm sure they blew you off right away no because i'm sure he was possibly expecting my response to be more like this is this is terrible i'm not going to sign this yeah but i inquired in a nice way leaving the door open saying i'm i'm looking to sign this tomorrow just wanted to clarify some of these things and the guy said all valid points and he answered them and he explained why the contract is the way it is why they talk about the rights so that they don't get ripped off Cover so, the band. You know, so that's his job as management. Uh, and it, it, yeah. Okay. Well, two more questions. Andrew Wilson. Hey, Fro. Steven and Todd, if hey. he's back hey, in the seat. that's right. Great job on getting backstage with the band. In the previous Raw Talk, you mentioned about Dave Grohl probably not giving a crap about the photos. Uh, do you, did you get an opportunity to ask the band about the state of the contracts in the industry and what th- were their thoughts? Uh, it only crossed my mind a couple times to ask... Um, Chris about it. Yeah, I don't and, think I would have asked the band. And I opted not to even go there. Yeah. I opted to just do my job, shoot photos, because I was there as that. And I'm not going to ask Dave that question. Well, and unless you wanna... they were asking me, unless they engaged me about photography. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and right. The conversation went there. Then I would go there. I didn't go there with Chris this time around because it's just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been right. It, the time wasn't right. Uh, in S, it, they're all about rock and roll. I don't think they care what happens with the photos. I don't either. But management's job is to protect the band. The band hires management so that they don't have to deal with issues. That's the rub. That's what happens. The band can make any decision they want because they're in the band, like leaving me an all-access pass because they made that decision. That's great. Not management. Uh, Skyler Dyer, do you wear earplugs? Every single show. Always. I wear earplugs. I have custom molded earplugs. You've got the legit earplugs. They're like 179 bucks. Best earplugs ever. Plus cheap. Best earplugs ever. Honest to God, dude, 
they are unbelievable. So much better than the etymotic. Re- if you want to spend 15 bucks, buy the etymotic research ones. Those work really well. And if you shoot a ton of shows or you need a lot of ear protection, I have the ultimate ears. You would need to go get your ears molded and then send send that in and it's gonna be 179 bucks and i got the the highest decibel cancellation possible is that like 30 or something I think it was like 25 that? oh okay mm. for that because i think 30 i think a lot of the foam ones are 30 but i have uh earpiece earplugs i mean they're only like 15 dollar piece of crap earplugs but they do the job they work well uh, i've had them for probably two or three years now i keep them on my keychain so i always have them and there's one time where i forgot them and that was a jimmy Eat world show at the e-factory and never again i swear i had tinnitus for like three days after ringing in my ear tinnitus tinnitus yeah what isn't it tinnitus it's what is tinnitus it? what tinnitus i've yeah, never my mom heard it had it called tinnitus tinnitus it's the ringing in the ears oh i thought it was tinnitus it's tinnitus i oh, think it's tinnitus okay, okay. <laughs> all right well you people correct us because i hear when he says tinnitus. you people he means people that don't hear i've just heard from security guards whatever um i've heard that the foam ones are bad for your ears because I've heard that too. the sound waves bounce back and forth well, and you need to know how to properly put yeah. them in the ear too all right so that was a long time spent on that but i think we had to do it it was needed uh to answer the questions and now we should get to photo news oh we're doing this backwards aren't we yeah uh, well, actually, we do have a little more on the Foo Fighters. The first story is uh, another newspaper has jumped on board with the Washington City Post and refused to shoot the band live because of their strict photo release. Uh, instead, they sent a cartoon sketch artist to cover the show. The Quebec paper Le Soleil uh, sent cartoonist Francis Descharnes to the gig uh, to simply draw what Would he saw. Would that be Descharnes? It might be Descharnes. Uh, They say, when the Foo Fighters claim rights to pictures of them in concert, they do not do it halfway. Not only could accredited photographers at the show yesterday not publish their work once, they had to give up all rights, end quote. But see, that's not that's not what the goddamn contract says. But they said, whoa, 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 whoa. No, but I'm just it's it's see, that's the frustrating part. A lot of times, like a lot of people that are commenting publicly about this stuff don't know the they read the headline the Foo Fighters are taking all your rights in the case where you're shooting the show the Foo Fighters stole my car it says may be subject (laughs) correct may be subject to their approval uh, yes, for approving pictures. For approving pictures. The Foo Fighters stole they my virginity. And it doesn't say that you need to... Or subject to approval, I asked, said. You, you know what question I asked? I didn't bring this up because it just popped into my head. When I was in- inquiring about the contract and the guy asked about the valid points, the question was, where do I submit the images after the show for you guys to have? Or do I? Like, how would you like me to submit them? You don't have to submit them. Unless they end up asking you to use them and you sign the contract, then that's where it goes into a different angle. So to be a newspaper or somebody else shooting it, I'm going to say almost 100% of the time, if you ran a photo, it's going to be very similar to everybody else's photo yeah. from every everybody else's show that they aren't going to ask you for that image, which means that you don't, you're not giving it up unless they ask for it. My case is freaking different because I because I'm shooting for them and I had to submit the images to them. That was the trade off. But I'm but people jump down jump on the headline that they're taking. The, it's a you know the contract's not great. Well, the contract is also very confusing the way it's worded. It is extremely confusing. It's full of legal mumbo jumbo jumbo. But again, you sign it. You have no other phone number on the... It didn't ask for your phone number. It didn't ask for your email address. It only asked for my name and what publication. And that's, that's all it asked thing. for. You could have just put Steven on there. Yep. Right? And it's just like... That just tells you... that They just want you to sign the damn thing to sign the damn thing. I'm shocked it didn't ask for any type of uh, contact information. Whether Nothing. it's an email address, phone number. Usually every contract So you can overthink these things. And you can never shoot anything ever again. Or you can just... Freaking put yourself into a situation to be successful. I agree. Now, you can see those sketches over on the website. I and posted them. the sketches them. are awesome. They are. And By it's the a way. good idea, too. Well, they look like The Simpsons? No, no. It looked <laughs> like the show. A very... Rough yeah, sketch. Very rough sketch. Kind of like court court sketches. Exactly. That's exactly what I imagined. Like, but they should have more said, rough than it was that. More, it was just line art. Literally. It was OJ in the at the concert. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the OJ trial. But uh, it is kind of a good idea, though, because anytime you now talk about the Foo Fighters, they can use that as the headline over and over again, and it's a general sketch of the Foo Fighters. Like, it doesn't have to be oh that was from the tour in 2015 
It could be. It was relevant. It, it made sense. Yeah. I laughed. I thought it was funny. It is funny. Uh, a new browser-based app helps you, helps you visualize your Lightroom catalog data and understand your most common photography habits. The app called Lightroom Dashboard is free to use, and since it's browser-based, there's no software or plugins to install and download. Uh, all you need to do is drag and drop your Lightroom catalog into the browser. Now, photographer and developer Cheney or Dick Cheney Ch- Wallace, Dick Cheney, <laughs> uh, my says favorite vice it's, president. Says it's a useful tool you can use to determine if you really need that no. new 16 to 35 lens or if you would actually <laughs> need that new f2.8 yeah. lens. Now, it shows your average monthly photo volume, what cameras you use, what focal lengths, apertures, and ISOs you use the most, and in how many images, what lenses you've used, what rev- resolution your images are saved at. Now, Chrome is the preferred browser for this. Is, that's what the developer says. He says, uh, large catalogs, especially those two gigs and up, are pro- problematic due to browser memory limits. So if you have a big catalog file, it's not worth trying. So basically what it's Screw doing you, is... you, Todd. <laughs> so basically what it's doing is putting together the stats of your shooting yes. for you, which is, which is pretty cool. It is good. Wish it was built into Lightroom, though. And I do like what he said about the lens. Like he was saying, like if you really think you need that F2.8 lens, but you always shoot at F4 or higher. That's a stupid statement. It's, that's a stupid statement. It's not a bad statement. That's a, how, how dare you that, say that? That's stupid. Why is that stupid? Because I have a 2.8, and so what? I shoot at 4. If I shoot at 4, that doesn't mean I'm just that saying I don't need that 2.8 You're going to save a lot of money if you're yeah, going to use it. But that's bullshit, man. Like if you're Todd and you're cheap, you're, I have the best you're lenses buy ever. The <laughs> but that's see, that, I only buy the best. I'm not yelling at you, Stephen. I just think that's a stupid statement. He's yelling at you, people. He's trying to say that you're going to save money. Oh, if you always shoot at f4, because your f4 shot with a 2.8 lens killed it. It's going to look sharper than your f4 shot at an f with an f4 lens. God, ah, ah, and I bit my fucking lip. Ah. Moving forward, uh, if your photography website is flash-based, you might want to think about changing it quickly to a non-flash-based website. Now, Firefox and Chrome both blocked Flash last week in response to news that hackers were exploiting known security bugs to target computers. The decision was made to block Flash after documents leaked onto the web with information regarding a flaw in the latest version of Flash. Uh, They'll allow Flash again after Adobe releases an official fix to the problem. Now, Adobe did push out an update with the fix shortly after, and in response, Firefox re-enabled Flash by default in its browser just a few days ago. Uh, I'm not sure if Chrome did it just yet, but uh, by the time this is live, I'm sure they already did it. I think everybody should... Um, <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> I think everybody should absolutely <laughs> get off of flash. flash at this point. That was well, my I, flash I thought a lot failing. of people got off of Flash when the iPhone really became well, the, the popular. The thing is, if you have a photo website that's Flash, that means nobody from their... F- really mobile browsers are going to be able to access exactly, it yeah. or nobody with an iPhone which is huge which, which is a ton of people so this is an opportunity to go ahead and get Squarespace go to squarespace.com slash fro try it out for 14 days it's mobile optimized it's HTML5 you want to see an example of it you can go to jaredpoland.com mine is built off of Squarespace you can build the same thing there in an hour if you just sat there and did it so Canon has announced an upgrade to their 430 EX flash with the 430 EX version 3 RT, which is both What's smaller the RT and lighter. For? Radio uh, transmission. Oh, not mentally challenged? <laughs> oh, God. Retweet. The f- oh, retweet. It's the retweet. <laughs> the Flash is the first in the 430EX lineup uh, to offer the radio-controlled wireless capability. Uh, the 600 also does it, but it's much more expensive. I think it's like 600 bucks versus 300. Uh, the 430EX version 3 RT can work with both radio and optical transmissions. Radio, radio. But it'll only receive signals as a slave for optical signals for radio transmission. Too the soon, Flash Steven. can trigger other units as a master, which is great. Too soon. Uh, it now has a built-in color filter for balancing color while shooting under incandescent lights, uh, along with a bounce adapter. Also, it has a new control dial, a shutter recycling time, uh, a faster, I uh, know, a shorter recycling time, and faster firing. Now it'll be available this September for three hundred bucks. Uh, I'm just glad they have the radio it's transmission expensive built in for a finally some competition with like the cheap Young News because they all have that and yeah. they're like seventy bucks. But for three hundred bucks. It's, it's expensive. It is still expensive. Don't get me wrong. For a small but power now flash. you don't have to buy the 600 RT, which is like again six, seven hundred yeah, bucks or whatever the price is. But uh, so it is nice they finally upgraded that, and hopefully from here on out, every flash will be like that. A new location database website will help you scout out locations for photo shoots or video shoots. Mm. 
Uh, introducing Scout.com with two T's. It's a free community-driven... Oh, I thought that was a misspelling when you gave that to Oh, me. no, no, no. It's two T's. It's a free community-driven location site that features a searchable world map with pinpoints of photographers' favorite spots to shoot. Now, here's how it works. The map is searchable by area, address, or keyword. Now, users can also simply browse the map freely if they want. Once they have a location picked, you can click on the pin, which brings up a preview of the spot and an image taken at that, lo at that location by contributing photographers. Now, regarding contributing, ph photographers can share their favorite shooting spots with everyone, which I'm not sure is a good thing. Uh, the site offers personal profiles where users can mm. upload their photos and specific locations, which will then show up on the public map for everyone to see. No, thank you. Is there contact information for location, the location? I am not sure. I am not sure about that just yet. Now, that would be my biggest concern. If I find a location, oh, this is great. Who do I contact to get permission? To I think be it just XYZ? gives you the actual like coordinates and pinpoint like Google Maps would do. Because a lot of film offices have similar things but yeah. they'll give you the contact information who to talk to and things of that nature yeah i'm That's not sure if you're about a that professional yes yeah if you're doing commercial work or That's something like that because i'm better than everybody else as a professional now the site's currently Best in beta video though ever it's in beta uh but it is free it's only, not in vhs it's only free until it's out of beta so mm. if you want to get on it now get on it right now yeah not gonna happen i'll wait for the alpha Canon's new 5DS and 5DSR were tested and ranked by your favorite Shh. DxO Mark's sensor tests. Uh, scoring an 87 for the 5DS and 86 for the 5DSR, the cameras received the highest scores ever achieved by Canon sensors. Now, you know these scores are bullshit, right? <laughs> They're absolute fictitious bullshit. It's just made up shit. What, what's, what, how do they measure it? Th it they exactly. Do, they do graphical tests. There's they all kinds shoot, of different types of tests. They don't go into the real goddamn world and shoot, Todd. No, it's how only the sensor it, they're doing. Well, they yell, test the sensor. Yell at me and tell me but about it. But the funny it. thing Basically, is... They're, they're testing the ISO capability in low light. They're testing the dynamic range, and they're c testing like the color portrait What do they shoot, depth. like boards, color boards, yeah, and all that color nonsense? boards, uh, charts. sharpness charts, like all that kind of stuff. Do they shoot raw with a t-shirt and an afro? They shoot JPEG, definitely. Super Stop. compressed. <laughs> Worst pictures ever, then. It just means nothing. Thing. It means absolutely nothing. Because don't they have cameras from like five years ago that still scored 87 on their fucking charts? I think so. I know these, you know? these weren't in the top 20. But um, it's just like a camera from seven years ago scored 87. Would you rather have the camera from seven years ago or the 5DSR? I mean, the one thing I do like about their tests are showcasing the low light the ISO capability. How about you take it out into the real world and shoot? Oh, yeah, of course. But it, it does give you a good starting you point. You just did that. Well, did you just yeah. put that video so up? We, we just put that video up. Yes. What, did You wanted to talk about that, right? Let me, let me just finish Worst this Worst video ever. All right, go ahead. I did want to finish that. The D810 and the A7S are still on top and beat the 5DS and 5DSR in color depth, dynamic range, and the low light performance. Um, and DxO Mark says if uh, dynamic range is more important to you than 50.6 megapixel photos, there are better alternatives out there. Like and my I will 60D. Say, the D810 has nearly 15 stops of dynamic range with the 5DS only having about 12. So that's a pretty big difference. Yeah, okay. Nikon obviously Where does my 60D rank on that chart? Probably like last. Go screw yourself. No, see, I, I absolutely despise the DxO Mark uh, ratings. It's not something to definitely go by, base but a, like base the entire camera off of, but it is a decent starting point in my opinion. We're looking at both cameras, the D810, and we're looking at the, D, the 5D SR, yes. and we're looking at them both at 100 ISO, and clearly you can see there is grain at one-to-one -one in the 5DSR, Canon one, where you don't see it in the Nikon one in very similar images. And we're trying to figure out, is it human error? Did I do something wrong to cause that? Or was it Steven's fault? And we've come up with no. Even though the lens isn't recommended, the 16-35, to we broke out a photo taken with the 70-200 to 28 version 2 IS, which is one of the best lenses I've ever seen. Yeah. And we zoom in on a, cl on a clear spot in the sky at 100 ISO, and you are, and, and you zoom in at one to one, and bam, you're faced with noise, grain, it's, just right in front of your and face. And it's weird because it's Canon's kind of known for their color noise, kind of that mush look when you zoom in one to one. Where this is really like a film fine grain, more of a Nikon grain when you get high ISOs. But this is at a hundred, which is kind of insane. Uh, now that's when you zoom in when you one zoom to in. one. Yeah, yeah. So if you start cropping. You're going to start seeing that grain, and it shouldn't be there at 100. What I'm wondering is, is it because it's the 5DSR and it's without the low-pass filter, and so that's just not smoothing things out? I don't and know. you're just literally seeing almost like the pixels? I, I, 
maybe I that's a question for them, but we still have to take it as the Nikon doesn't have a low pass filter, but it doesn't have the low pass cancellation effect. It just doesn't have a low pass filter. And yet that yet that looks, looks fine. Perfect. Yeah. At 36 megapixels. Exactly. So it probably has to do with the 50.6. Yeah. What were you going to say about the video? Oh, no, I was just thinking you just recently put out that that, yeah. that video Real world review. with with the with the 5 DSR 693 yeah. R2D2. Yeah. And that's where the pictures came from, from that review. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I saw people asking, uh, did we just go out f- specifically for that? And it really wasn't for that. It was, Not it at was, all. It was uh, for bigger, better things. And we just so happened to have that camera. Right. Which, uh, I w- and if, any, if you want to blame anybody, it's on me. Because I'm like, Jared, what cameras are we going to test out? You should test out a camera all the time. I don't want to test out a camera. So. Well, it became an afterthought. Like, we used the camera, and then we have the footage. We might as well put together a real-world review because I actually used it. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. it's in the ideal world, we would have shot me doing a five-minute portrait out there, but we were shooting something else, which superseded everything. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. And if anybody caught my rant, you couldn't catch it now because it disappeared on Snapchat. But I went to town on one of the comments that was left, which I'm going to tell you right now what it said. It said... Here we go. This video is so good... Put on your seatbelts. This video is so good that they must have been getting paid by Canon. And if that's the case, or because that's the, ca- because that's the case... It's clearly an advertisement. They need, to just, they need to write that in there and say that it's an advertisement. Okay, I'm sorry that because quality is so good that you must feel... That, well, thank you for the compliment that the quality was great. I absolutely that goes destroy. Out to, to Todd, Stephen, and Joffy. Not Steven, though. Not Steven. For, for doing a great job with the quality... But to sit there and say because the quality is so good that you can't understand that we did it ourselves and no, we weren't uh, getting paid look, to we do went it. Out, we went out there to shoot something very high end, some future things that we're working on. I paid for the trip, and 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 if and if anything, it was it was uh, it came about because of the adventure driven guys. I mean, yeah. they Correct. were like, come out and do raw talk, and then we were like, oh, if we're going to be out at the edge of the Grand Canyon, let's take advantage of that and do some other stuff. Right, and then we got and then we got gear. Yeah, so we that did we step it up. Of. Yeah. I probably dropped ten grand on the trip because I had to pay for Joffy to go, to pay for Todd to go, have to pay, you know, you get paid. Steven, Steven, you know, is, is uh, worth the, it. the flights were three grand. The hotels were what, another thousand dollars. Just put the invoice up online so everybody can see it. All right, next story. Um, but I, I did want to. So the truth is. We just do good quality. Yeah, yeah. And no, the, the truth is, is that we absolutely destroy. And it, without Steven, it would have been even better. So just God, imagine. Shut up, Imagine Todd. that. I mean, editing that thing, it's a beast. Because I had to literally sift through four days of footage and get the best of the best footage. And that's why, I guess, he thinks it's an advertisement. Because it was well, so Well, the drone stuff good. looks incredible. The drone, the drone stuff, stuff, does stuff is amazing. If we didn't, yeah, that really topped it off. And we well, didn't it, pull that out. Which was that? That was the, the, um, the Phantom 3, Phantom 3, 3, 3 Pro. Pro. But yeah. we recorded at 1080p, 60 frames per second. I love that Yeah, so we didn't much. shoot 4K. That was the most so fun I had in, in, in months Great. flying yeah. that thing. Yeah. How many more stories? Uh, we're probably about halfway done. Jesus. Hurry up, Steven. Sorry, your rant took 40 minutes. Did it really? Uh, An update on the anti-freedom of panorama proposal that we talked about a few weeks back uh, that threatened to restrict the photography of copyrighted buildings and sculptures from public places in Europe. Uh, Well, good news. The European Parliament voted with a majority of members uh, against the plan. Only 40 of the 751 members voted to pass the proposal. This comes after 540,000 people around the world signed a petition on change.org to petition the European Parliament. Now, at the same time, an amendment that attempted to extend the freedom of panorama to all European countries wasn't passed, meaning that specific countries like France, Italy, and Greece will still be able to restrict the use of photos showing copyrighted structures in public places. So most of the European countries are still good, but yeah, France and Italy oh, and Greece are still screwed. Are open. Oh, do not put, do not take pictures in front of the Eiffel Tower. Steven, your pictures suck anyways. Please leave. Have a croissant and shut the fuck up. First off, why is it okay for us to make fun of the French and me to do an Australian voice, but I can't do Asians? <laughs> why? Why? Because you have horrible accents. Yeah, but... Why is that seen as bad? But you could make fun of the French and the Italians. The and conquerors of the world, yes. But you can't be like, you know, what Gary Fong did in, his la- in one video? Well, Gary tra- Fong is Asian. But that- and he was mimicking an Asian person. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He was 
But I want to do it too. It's like you mimicking an American and making fun of an American. I what do up, it, bro? I, I do it all the time. I make fun of Steven. All right. God, I Go hate ahead. you, Todd, so much. Uh, a new modular control interface for Lightroom is now available called Palette. The system was initially launched uh, through Kickstarter and succeeded after completing their goal about two years ago. The modular system features a set of sliders, dials, and buttons that connect via <laughs> magnets to the core and serve as a universal controller to help you quickly edit in Lightroom and other Adobe editing programs. Now, Palette will support most of the Adobe Creative Suite, including Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects, Illustrator, and it's currently in beta in Premiere Pro and InDesign, and I'm sure it's going to come to more, too. Now, by sliding the slider, pushing the button, and turning the dial, users can now uh, make fine-tuned adjustments once they program Palette with their favorite uh, system. Nope. With their favorite adjustments and shortcuts in a specific program like Lightroom, now the modular system is then ready to edit with. In Lightroom, Palette lets you control any develop module sliders, work with different tools and features, toggle presets, and much more, too. I'm toggling presets. Now, as far as pricing goes, you can pre-order Palette at $199 for the starter kit, which is only four modules, $299 for the expert kit, which is seven modules, and about 500 bucks for the professional kit, which is that one. Well, this is part of the, this it's is half, half the professional, of the professional kit. kit, which is 14 modules, so seven and seven, it's and like Star $900 oh, shit. for the limited edition wood professional kit, uh, which is the same as a professional kit, but not in aluminum, it's in wood. The wood was pretty hot, though. It looks awesome if you're a hipster. Yeah, it looks amazing. All right, like I can't Sutter's wait to use this, get it. though. So. Um, but individual modules can also be purchased separately, and they'll start shipping in November of 2015. So I'm shocked you got it already. Well, they have st still a few left from the Kickstarter. Ah. So that's how I ended up getting it. Now, since they are an official Adobe partner, I wanted to bring this up. Uh, users can get a 20% discount from the Adobe Creative Cloud Photography Plan when they buy a palette kit. Uh, and there's a preview video uh, of it in action over on the website. It looks pretty cool. Yep. Are you actually going to use it? Uh, I plan on trying it. Yeah. I just have to set it up. Yeah. Uh, now that the site's launched, I have uh, you know other things to focus on. I can add it to the list. I just wonder how much easier it's going to be if you use like 14 modules. Like that's a lot well, of freaking buttons to use when you can just click a mouse. Yeah. If you had a couple like the starter kit, I think that would be good. I think that the twisty knob for me for 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 the fine tune for the fine tuning Ooh. of Ew. of. Uh, or maybe even this. I just think the the twisty knob is probably better than than the than the the slider. Yeah. For Lightroom. Yeah. You know, but is it going to take me longer? I just have to learn how to click. You know, I just have to set it up and try it. I mean, the button's nice for maybe those like before and after or like reset buttons or flagging. Flagging. Even though that's really easy yeah, to hit. Starring, that. rating, whatever you want. Really do. easy to hit five, six, seven. And you can <laughs> literally program in the preview video they're showing. You can pre program almost any any shortcut you need in Lightroom, which yeah. is great. And you but I'm DJ. so much of a, a shortcut person on the keyboard that I tend to do that a lot faster. And you I can DJ with the sliders as well. You can DJ with the sliders too. All right, next. Uh, Nikon has issued a new service advisory for the D750. The advisory warns, boom, 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 boom. warns users that some cameras may have a shutter defect that causes shading in a portion of photos. The affected Nikon D750 cameras were manufactured between October and November of 2014. <laughs> and we have three of them right now. We do have three of them. Uh, hopefully they're we not We actually affected. should check the serial numbers. We so they have a new site dedicated to the service advisory. D750 owners can simply type their serial number into the site and uh, it'll let you know if your camera was affected. Now to address the issue, Nikon is offering free repairs regardless of whether or not the original warranty has expired. Unbelievable. So we got to check these like after the show. Well, they sent them to us, so. I'm sure they're fine. I hope so. And last... Story? Nope, not last story. Still a couple Jesus, more. hurry up. Steve. NASA unveiled the clearest image of Pluto thus far, which was taken by the New Horizons spacecraft. The image took nine years to get after the spacecraft traveled three billion miles to finally reach the billion Earth planet. miles. The image was captured during a flyby when New Horizons was 476,000 miles away from Pluto. Now, according to NASA... The vehicle is in an information gathering mode currently, and they should have a clearer picture of other images captured sometime this week. Uh, the initial images were taken by the New Horizons Long Range Reconna Reconnaissance, Reconnaissance Imager, or LORI is what they call it. And they recently posted another image that features a close-up of the icy mountains on Pluto as well. Pretty cool. Yeah, it was. it's absolutely fascinating. The fact that you know NASA has been so decimated by cuts... And they still pull this amazing stuff off. Yeah. And the science aspect of it, that you send something three billion miles, 
and it gets there. You know, earlier in the year, they landed on a freaking meteor or asteroid, whatever. They landed on it. They landed on a fucking asteroid. It's insane. How the hell do you figure this stuff out? The fact that we waste so much money as a country on war and bullshit and trillions of dollars and not on exploration and the fact that NASA has pushed so much technology from the 50s on that we wouldn't be sitting here today recording with cameras or whatever we have if NASA wasn't pushing the envelope. I wouldn't be able to eat my microwave microwave mac and cheese. <laughs> the money needs to be spent on exploration and science and education. I agree. But it's being wasted on fucking war. Now, I wonder uh, the, the, the processing of these images, because they're probably just layering and layering different types of filters and colors and all kinds of stuff to get these images. Well... I, okay, so I read it in an article. This is what happens. There are two ways that it sends back. It sends back the low-res uh, data first, and then it's going to go into a one-year sleep to send back all of the high-res data. It's going to take a year to send it all back. A full year. So what it can't wow. do, it can't transmit at the same time at high-res as uh, and navigate. So it has to turn off the navigational system, go into a safety spin so that they can ping it to wake up again. Wow. Because then they need it because it, it doesn't have enough power. It uses plutonium. It doesn't have enough power to go ahead and and send back the high res data at the same time. Because when the sensors are reading off the uh, off the off the uh, Pluto, then the the other thing is pointing the other way. And so they need to rotate it to send it. It needs to go into a spin and it goes at a 1980s speed, 300 baud modem or something which is really slow. Yeah, I don't know what any of that means. Really sl It's transferring data. So it's going 3 billion fucking miles, it's man. It's like Same. Steven, it can't multitask. God, Todd, I hate <laughs> you. Photographer Joe Grundy lost 15 grand in camera gear Joe after it was Grundy. stolen, but was able to identify the thief and recover stolen equipment after seeing his name and the copyright info of images posted online. Now, the whole incident happened last year when he was selling two lenses online. He was then contacted by photographer Bryce Wilson, who was interested in buying them. After giving Wilson his address, Wilson suddenly backed out of the deal. Now, only a few days later, his house was broken into and $15,000 of gear was stolen. Wonder who took it. The next Never month, give your address. The next month, Grundy noticed that Wilson had posted a photo on Instagram showing his new Canon 5D Mark III and Canon 35 1.4L lens, <laughs> both of which were stolen from bum, Grundy's bum, house. Bum. <laughs> now then, in October of 2014, Grundy was contacted by a photographer who had noticed his name listed as the copyright owner in the exif details of Wilson's photos. The police then got involved. The serial number was found to match the stolen cameras. <laughs> Where's that camera, hippie? <laughs> And Wilson was arrested and charged with burglary on October 16th, 2014. Now, Wilson later pled guilty to burglary and was sentenced to 100 hours of community service. Uh, and Grundy received all of his gear back. Now, Grundy reminds people to always put their names in their camera's copyright settings to not only prevent copyright infringement, but catch potential thieves. Now, this obviously occurred a few months back, but Grundy says he recently started bringing the story to the public's attention after he discovered that Wilson was still promoting and profiting from photos that had been capturing, uh, that were captured with that gear, the stolen gear. Yeah, you got to protect your stuff, and that's uh, pretty bad that somebody would do that. Yeah, really uh, bad. Is that end of photo news? One more story. Now he's taking pictures in the, in the jail shower. Photographer Aaron Draper has a new photo series that documents the lives of the homeless. The project called Underexposed hopes to make the homeless as visually appealing as possible in a society that is visually demanding. Now, when it comes to social activism, you achieve greater public awareness by communicating hope as opposed to hopelessness. Hope sells, he says. Uh, now, he hopes to bring them into the light and out of the shadows for others to view and appreciate. Now, the images feature like a homeless man in a library getting educated, a man playing music, people with their pets, their mobile homes. It's a pretty inspiring uh, photo series. But he says, in quotes, I use lighting as a way to interest the viewer in the subject shown. And I hope to enable people to gain a more humane view of the homeless. He uh, finishes with, if I'm able to affect the way that one person views the homeless, I will have considered my series a success. And that gives me hope. Great stuff, though. I posted the images over on the website, which we haven't named yet, the actual link to that. Fronosphoto.com slash raw talk hyphen 142. We'll take you over to the new Fronosphoto.com. new one. We call Fronosphoto 3.0. It is the third iteration of the website. And the raw talk page is awesome. Way better. Because if you want to download the MP3, there's a button for that. If you want to subscribe on iTunes, there's a button for that. And there's also a sponsored by... 
episode plug. Very nice. And that is it for photo news. Nice. You it's know, about we skipped time. again. It's we, about we, time. Skipped the music. we skipped the music Should, again. Th- that's my fault. I need to start making a note to do that. I, f- I completely forgot. Do you want to do an ending music? We can do ending music. What kind least. of ending music? Should we do rock music? No, we should do police chase music. <laughs> yes. Why don't we we've do done that chase? before. We'll do we've done police chase. chase music? We've done, I think we have. Why don't we do 70s police chase music? 70s. Why don't we just do... We'll do 70s music mixed with police, police chase, chase music. music. Mm. All right. So, sorry. All audio that you hear from this is coming from audioblocks.com slash go slash fro you ready for ending music (laughs) and I don't know what to do for 70s police chase whatever you could find Uh, we'll find out like Beretta what Beretta Beretta it's an old show all right so that's photo news we spent I think I spent a ton of time at the forefront. I hope I hope you guys enjoyed the early part. Um, not enjoyed, but found it informative. The discussion, the open discussion about the Foo Fighters. Sometimes you just have to take time and discuss it out. You have to. So that's photo news. Now we're going to get to gear of the week. And then Wheel of Fro. Yes. And then that's it. Mm-hmm. Gear of the week this week. We had a lot of stuff, but I'm going to talk about this. What is this? Bum, 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 bum. This right here. I've been teasing for a little bit. You're a tease. This is the Frono's Photo I Shoot Raw Edition Think Tank Retrospective 30 bag. Designed off of my all-time favorite shoulder bag, which is the Retrospective 30 that Think Tank has. So I've always wanted to have a bag made to be custom for me. But I didn't want to deal with a company that made them in China. They make theirs in Vietnam. Um... I didn't want to do. I just didn't like other bags. This is the bag I use. So how could I go ahead with another company yeah. and have a bag made? Like You've other companies been a have think come tank to me. User, yeah. But other companies are like, "Well, you want your own bag?" I'm like, "Where do you make them?" They're like China. I'm like, "But they all come off the same factory. I don't like it. it costs I use five dollars to make. I use Think Tank. So when I sat down with them to create my own bag, I didn't want to just slap my own name on it and call it a day. So. I asked if I could do my own material because the first thing they did was slap my name on a bag and called it my own. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that because that just looks like your bag with my name on it. So we went with a ballistic nylon, which they've never done in a What is the ballistic bag. nylon? Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's this it pattern. Tougher? It's just stronger. Stronger material? It's just a better material. <laughs> Gun- <It> probably <laughs> won't stop a bullet. Can I shoot it? <laughs> All right. Holds up pretty good. <laughs> it's got I shoot roll on the front. We kind of I think it's still pretty discreet. Oh yeah, um, I like the, the it's subtle. The it's big, look to but it. it's subtle. It yeah. has a stealthy look. On the side, we've got my Fronos Photo logo. It's got my face. Right, it's got my face inside. On it. What makes the bag different is it's got the red piping instead of green uh, instead of blue, oh. and it matches my uh, black strap. rapid strap. Yeah. and oh. then only with my bags does it come with a free. Uh, peewee pixel pocket rocket i love those and this one holds uh four larger cards Open and three sd cards but it says i shoot raw on it bam comes with that free that's great uh i am uh, i like that it's both look, too sd and cf cards. right i absolutely love this bag because whether you have one camera and one lens buy a bag buy the best bag you can once so you can grow into it I bought this bag when I only had two lenses. Uh, uh, I don't even know what it was at the time. Uh, probably a 80 to 200 or 70 to 200 and a 24 to 70. And actually, no, it was probably the DX stuff because I had it back from like nine years ago. Uh, so I probably had a D2H and stuff like that. And I just grew with it. And all the stuff I talked about earlier, having taken to the Foo Fighters, all fit into here with the 300 2.8, the extra you know, thing right here, the raincoat it comes with. Anyway, you can get this bag right now. It's in stock. I'm only shipping it in the U.S. because of shipping purposes. It's really expensive to ship out of the country, um, and there's a lot of importing taxes, but it's available for $199.99 at store.fronosphoto.com. Dot com. Uh, I'm probably going to run for the first week and a half or so a discount on the flat rate shipping, but I, I don't know the exact price on the shipping. I'm still figuring it out, but it's going to be a flat rate. So you know that the bag is $199.99 and shipping will be $12.99 or less. That's where it will be, but that's flat rate. And for those that watch the 5, the five DSR uh, footage, the whole real world review, you'll notice that you probably saw that bag in the actual review. Yep. Steven, have you grown into your sack yet? 
<laughs> have you grown into your bag yet? I do bring my retrospective 30 uh, pretty much out all the time for my shooting bag. That's more of my pit bag for concerts. Right. So I, I absolutely love the bag. I've been taking it to concerts. It's nice. Um, You've been using it pretty much since the Grand Canyon. Right? I have been. Yeah. So everybody can everybody can go check it out at the store. It's there, uh, and we're good to go. So now it's time for Wheel of Fro. Stop. Other way. Todd still doesn't know how God, to line Todd stuff is up. The worst. We would have we, we would have had, had Joe back. do this. We would have had Joe do this, but Joe had a family thing and had to go deal with family stuff, and that's why he is not here. Todd just crossed the camera. Good job, Todd. That is like a rookie mistake. All right, so here it is. The I wheel go of wherever I want to go. Here we have the Wheel of Fro, starting with Rode Microphone. They are, you know, we use them each and every week. We got... All right, let me get through this. We have the Atomos Ninja 2, which you can go pick up... Uh, Bare Bones, they offer that as well. But if it lands on that, you're going to win. Adoramapix.com. Get some free stuff. Fro Prize, you will not get a free bag from me. Son of a... <laughs> they cost... You a-hole. They cost too much money for me to give one of those. That uh, is a ripoff. Oh, the one thing I didn't talk about is uh, people were... Why didn't you kickstart it? Like, you should have kickstarted the bag. I don't I'm going to feel... kick you if I land on that circle. I think Kickstarter works great for releasing a product that you can't fund yourself. But if you have the funds to go ahead and purchase it on your own, I had to pre-purchase all the bags. Daddy yeah. Warbucks. I pre-purchased all of them. No, I invested in myself, Ooh. invested in myself, and didn't feel that it made sense for me because what would have happened? If I didn't pre-order the bags, it would have taken five months after the Kickstarter for, for the bags to get here. Yeah, people would have got means, them in like two years. Which means I took people's $200 plus shipping that they could have used for the next five months, and I'm holding it. Delivery in 2018. Right, so... <laughs> I didn't feel that that was right for the end user. I had the money sitting aside that I could invest in it. So I did that because I didn't feel that it was right to make people wait with, their, with me taking their money already. So that's what I wasn't for for the Kickstarter for this type of project. Because I, I didn't want to look, you know, I see people putting it out for like photo books and stuff. And I get it for pre-selling. Yeah, that's cool and all. I just, I just, I just felt that it wouldn't have been right. That's why. Yes. Think Tank Photo. Hey, look at that. If it lands on that, maybe they'll give you one. Do of I actually, get a fro bag for that can one? They? No, Do because I get a fro bag only for you that. bought them all. I bought them all. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. I had to pre-order 300. 300. Rip off. 300. Wow. Um, so they don't own any of them. They, they don't own them. They don't I, own copyright? Unless, unless they had, no. Unless Exclusive. they own, well, they own the patent on their bag. Yeah. They own the patent. Uh, so that would be a Think Tank prize, not my bag. Audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. Lexar, wonderful, I, wonderful I, logo. I like yeah, that. I had the I had the kids downstairs do it. I still need to go do that. You get some Lexar free stuff. Lightroom, get the Creative Cloud, Rode microphone, question mark, anything on the wheel, not and, including and a my bag. bag. <laughs> what? Can I get a bag with that? No. <laughs> Borrow lenses to rent uh, to get some stuff, which we've been getting a lot of stuff from them. Fro Prize. Squarespace.com slash go. So, no, Squarespace.com slash fro to get your free trial. Videoblocks.com slash go slash fro. Lexar again, Black Rapid. And it's time to spin the wheel. And I have a person's name, but I'll spin you it first. You have a name. I have a name. Before we spin it. I have a name. That's shocking. Before that we spin it. Wow. Well, you know, I got to pee anyway. Todd's got to do it again. No. Spin the damn wheel already. Go! Around and All around right. it goes where it stops. Nobody knows the wheel of fro is about to stop on... I'm going to think it's going to be like Think Tank today. Can or, I get a bag? Or maybe it's going to be the Atomos right in the freaking middle. Uh, Again, it just uh, missed. Uh, road, road microphone. Uh, last week it was road, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, last week was road microphones too. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. It, oh, was. it was, yeah. The winner, I'm going to give we it never to do two in a row. Robert Rogers. Congratulations. <laughs> What's he get in your bag? <laughs> you, Robert Rogers. God, I'm going to break that freaking phone. <laughs> Robert Rogers, congratulations. He asked the question, what kit did you use on the shoot? And what piece of kit did you forget to pack? As there is always that one thing. Hmm. And that is pretty much where we're going to end the show for all the photo news stories and more on the new Fronosphoto.com. You can go to Fronosphoto.com slash raw talk hyphen 142. Anything else you'd like to add, Todd? My new camera. 
Well, it's not your new camera. I bought I mean, it. I'm keeping this now. <laughs> Clearly. We, we, for the show, uh, Todd's Angle has been the uh, GoPro Hero Session for If You Lick It, I Will Punch You in the Face. I We're still figuring you're, it out. You're literally like two millimeters away from the... Will you get away from the fucking thing? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's that camera. What? Steven, anything else you want to add? No, no. Let's get this freaking show ended with. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the new website. I hope you enjoyed this Raw Talk. I know it was different. I know it was a little long. But we thought it was important that we discuss those topics and got them out of the way. So there you have it. That is the end of the show. Oh, thank you, Adamos, for being this week's sponsor. Yes. And that's it. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. Bye.